What's up you guys, it's Arthur here and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be working on the DCF model which is part three of the JP Morgan Virtual Internship for Investment Banking. The task consists of two sections. Number one is building that DCF and number two is presenting a summary in the slide deck of the valuation that we found using the DCF. Now the way I'm going to do this video is I will build the DCF really quickly and I will pause in sections to try and explain why I'm doing certain things. And by the way, I'll be working on the advanced version of the DCF. If you have chosen to work on the basic version, it's practically the same thing. I believe the only difference between the two is that in the basic version, some of the financials have already been pre-filled. So in the end, it should still be the same result that I get from my DCF. Now in real life, you know, things people are gonna make different assumptions. A minor variation is probably fine. But before we get started, if you guys could smash that like button and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. And as you do that, let's get into the DCF model. So here's the DCF model. What we're gonna do is work on this financials tab and most of the information that we're looking for here as the notes suggest is we're going from a uh, company, we're gonna be linking in company financial forecasts. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, now straight away moving into the percentage. Uh, as you can see, the note says include growth rates trending to 1% by 2030. How we're gonna do that is we are going to calculate average, this number, this number, copy, there we go. So we, as you can see, it's trending down to 1%. Now, moving into the EBITDA numbers from the forecast, this is also a little complicated. What we wanna do, or not complicated, but something you might easily forget, is let's go press equals intercompany financial forecast. Now this is EBITDA post exceptionals. So what we wanna do here is we want to get that number and minus exceptionals. And then we select it through and that is the management case for the EBITDA numbers. Now, as the note suggests, we are going to include a growth rate trending to 9%. So we're gonna use average this number to this number all the way across. And that's how we get that. Now, moving across to uh, the depreciation and amortization, going back into the financial forecast. Now it's important here that we grab this number plus this number and all the way across. Okay. Now, Percentage of capex. We can leave and do that later now because we don't have capex yet. Uh, the tax rate stays the same. So 17% all the way across. Now the capex number going into the forecast financials. That's just simply the capex line. There it is. So all the way across, but then from 2025, from 2025 onward, it becomes uh, just 50,000. Oh, sorry, just, just 50, um, I believe it's in millions, right? It's 50 million, oops. Just, so it's just the last number here. Now we can go back to the percentage of capex. So, yep, just double checking. So we're gonna go amortization and depreciation divided by capex and all the way across. Let me 
check that. that. Um, now this goes down to 95%, so we're gonna use the same strategy as last time. Now, I think there's an issue here. Ah, so here we forgot to add a negative sign in front. There we go. So th this is something really important in the DCF, the negatives and positives. You need to be aware of uh, what you're doing, especially in this next part after this. Now these these bits are a little easier. So change in capital, change in capital, zero from then on. Now other cash flows down back into the financials. So there should be a row for other right there. Same thing all the way across and onward will be the same so far. There we go. Exceptional items. Now here we need to add 94. Sorry, the exceptional items up here plus non-cash exceptionals. Exceptionals plus non-cash exceptionals. Okay, all the way across. Great. And the assumption is zero from then onward. Okay, so that is this slide done. Now we can move on to the next tab. So the key thing here is we're gonna set the perpetuity growth rate at 0.5%, uh, terminal value exit EBITDA multiple 8.5, and the WAC is 8.5 as well. Now, this tax section here is the bit that I wanted to quickly mention. So here in the note, it says EBIT times tax rate. So I'm gonna show you why you gotta be careful here. Let's first uh, fill in the, uh, the tax rate. So uh, we can get that from our financials tab. So let's go into the financials. Uh, we're looking for I think it was 2020 onward. 2020 onward, so hang on. Yep, 2020 onward. Great, now all the way across, there we go, that's the tax. Now, the tax that we will be paying, we can either, the way I'm gonna do it is I will multiply EBIT by the tax rate, which is what they told us to do, right? Now you need to be careful because another way that you can do this is you can do EBIT, you can do negative EBIT times the tax rate and you'll get the exact same number, but it would be negative. So you need to be aware of your signs. Now that's important for uh, earnings before interest after tax, which is this po uh, point here. So if you did the same thing as me, uh, it's pretty simple. You go to EBIT and then we're gonna take away the tax. So EBIT, take away the tax. 
Now, if that was negative, you would add that tax, right? Which is what the note says on the side. All right, and that's it. That's it for part one of building the DCF model. In the next part, I will do my best to explain a couple things that have already been pre-coded just to give you guys a little better understanding of what's actually happening and maybe in the future you can replicate it yourself. And of course, in the next video, I will go through summarizing this information into the slide deck. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it useful. Please leave a like and subscribe. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. It's pretty exciting stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.